Hi, this is my review of Numenera. Numenera is a science fantasy role-playing game with a lot of weird elements. The PDF is pretty good because it has a lot of cool illustrations and mm, graphics, but it loads pretty quickly. And the information is presented in a very clear way. You really don't understand how to, how to play the game and, uh, and you understand the setting. And it's a complete game. You have your bestiary and, and your you know, rules and your information about the, the setting. And it has a virtual level of contents and hyperlinks. However, there are a couple of negative things I, I found about it. Um, first of all, I think it repeats information too much. You're going to see things repeated uh, three or four times. And some other negative thing, I think there's a bit of arrogance or, I don't know, a pedantic style to the writing of the entire book. Even uh, uh, when they describe the, the, the different cultures or the um, thought processes of different characters, uh, you, you see that kind of like an arrogance, but, and also there's a part in the book where, where they are giving you advice on how to use the, the rules, where they compare uh, players to rats in a lab, uh, a lab rat, and, and I don't know, even though it was like put on uh, kind of like a joke, it feels a bit out of place. Well, let me talk about the setting, because the setting of this game is very... is one of the strong points. The setting is not entirely original, but is it's very well put together. It's supposed to be the planet Earth in about uh, a billion years in the future. And before that, there were, there were eight previous worlds, or, or aeons, where civilizations um, uh, came and, and went away. But they left their mark on, on planet Earth uh, with different uh, devices and, and monoliths and, and technology to the point that the planet, uh, planet Earth uh, feels very alien and like from out of some other dimension with uh, animals and, and plants that are completely bizarre sometimes and technologies everywhere. There are even um, nanomachine storms that fly throughout the entire planet, uh, changing everything that they touch, the molecular structure. And there are all sorts of, of weird elements in, in making um, magic and technology indistinguishable from one another. The cultures are, are, are despite the thing that I, that I said uh, about a minute ago, the cultures are, are, are very well described and, and you get a, a sense that this is not your standard fantasy setting, this is not just a medieval thing with magic, This the, the buildings are feel very organic, kind of like uh, those illustrations from H.R. Geiger. Everything feels, I don't know, like alien or otherworldly. And you're going to have a lot of potential for adventures because uh, the way the elements are presented, and they hide a lot of, of mystery and, and in intrigue and, and weirdness. Something that I think is a bit out of place in the setting is that they... Um, put this uh, the order of truth like a major religion and there's the uh, the amber pope that rules over the order of truth and this order is dedicated to to this um to discovering the numenera of the past because numenera refers to all the the ancient uh, gizmos gadgets and artifacts of the of the past that have a powerful effect uh, over the planet or other things and the order of truth is dedicating dedicated to to understanding these things but it feels, I don't know, too Catholic. I think uh, some uh, other religions are, are going to feel a bit excluded. And there's even a Numenera called the Catholicon. So that's, that sounds like propaganda. Maybe they should have done uh, Catholicon. Have you noticed how Cthulhu and Catholic sound very similar? Maybe they should have um, used a religion based on Cthulhu. But because uh, the, the entire setting is very weird, the, the thing of the order of truth uh, feels a bit out of place. Or, and I, I don't understand why they went the religious way in. Because in a billion years from now, maybe religion is not going to be present. Maybe they should have gone with a, I don't know, a, a scientific organization or maybe a philosophical order. I don't know, but it just seems kind of silly. And well, uh, there's one part in the book where they say um, the ninth world is um, built upon the bones of the eight previous worlds. And I think the same could be said of the setting. The, the setting is built upon the bones of previous works of fiction and other uh, role-playing games. So, uh, for example, uh, a lot of uh, younger players are going to see the, the Ninth World and going to be, oh, this is so original. But um, for me, it's, 
it's pretty much the dying earth and, and Dune. And I've seen uh, similar things in other role-playing games such as Gamma World or the Mutant Epoch. So it's it's a, a campaign setting that is very well put together, but it's not the most original one. It's still it's a, it's an exciting world where you can uh, carry out a lot of, of cool adventures. And well, uh, let me talk about the system itself. The system is pretty simple. First of all, to create your character, you need to choose uh, three things, which are um, a descriptor, a character type, and a focus. The descriptor, descriptor is, is about what, how your character uh, is presented uh, to the world. Maybe your character is charming or intelligent or strong. And this gives you different uh, bonuses and abilities. And your character type is pretty much like uh, your character class. There are three. The, the Glyve, which could, uh, would be the warrior. The Jack, which is basically a jack of all trades, but feels like a warrior, wizard, um, thief. And the uh, nano that feels uh, like uh, your wizard or, or sorcerer. Now, uh, when you choose one of these three types, that doesn't mean you will not be able to use uh, other things. For example, your your glaive doesn't mean that, that he's not going to be able to use uh, magic because magic in this game is is mixes up with with science, a uh, unique thing. Um, but uh, thanks to your focus, maybe your your glaive or, or your warrior. Is going to be able to bear a halo of fire or control beasts or talk to machines so you're going to get all these uh, supernatural abilities that you will be able to customize uh, as you uh, go up in, in levels or, or tiers and you get different attacks and different ways to interact like how to, to climb this or that mountain how to to search or, or negotiate you, you can um, customize your character uh, in so many ways so that you don't feel uh, locked into a certain role so you're going to have a, a nano that is going to be may maybe not the best at close quarters combat but he's, he will going to be pretty decent if you choose the right focus and, and the right uh, descriptor and now let me talk about how the characters interact with the world the system is very simple because you only need to roll a d20 or, or 20 sided die uh, for all the checks you rolled a d20 and you need to reach a certain number or target, target number and you get different uh, penalties or, or bonuses according to, to your training and how your character is um, uh, the, the gear you are using and different uh, powers and abilities so you're going to get uh, a plus two bonus or a minus two penalty uh, or, you're, or you're even going to be able to lower the difficulty of the task and this is a very cool thing about the game. You don't need to add dozens of modifiers. You just need to, to add a plus two, a minus two, and or uh, uh, you're going to lower the difficulty of the task. And now your characters are going to be entering uh, many weird places and finding all these, the Numenera, these different uh, ciphers and, and artifacts that some, some have a one-time effect. Uh, but some others, uh, your characters are going to be using them throughout the entire adventure and even more. And this is uh, something that I find really cool about uh, the way the, the rules are implemented. They really uh, build a story. They, they put together um, a plot line and, and the way this plot line develops is, is very entangled with the entire rules of the game. So for example, but in a positive way of course, for example, you the game master does not roll the, the dice. The characters are the only ones who, who are rolling dice for everything, for, for combat and, and for tasks. The game master affects the, the story through uh, GM intrusions, which are basically um, challenging effects that take advantage of, of players um, at different situations. So for example, if a player tried to, to climb a mountain but didn't make it, the game master can say, "Oh, your player, your character fell down, and but it fell down into this nest of, of horrible monsters." And the player has to decide if he wants to to face that challenge or he face experience, so the to to nullify the GM intrusion. But of course, if the player faces the challenge, he's going to get experience. And the main source of experience points in this game is discoveries. Every monolith, every artifact, every powerful thing that, that uh, is related to one of the eight previous cycles of planet Earth is going to give you experience. And 
the the game itself uh, is pretty much based on the premise that, that the story should take importance over over, uh, over the rules. This is a game where the story does not obey the rules, and the rules are there to to carry out a, a, an exciting story or, or plotline. And this is different from other games uh, where you have the campaign setting, but uh, it plays a second fiddle to, to the rules, to the random effects you get by rolling the dice. Here is all about the story, but there are a lot of optional rules to add more depth uh, to the system. If you think, oh, this is too simple for me, I'm I want um, a more complex way to fight because combat is, is even um, more simplified uh, by by uh, handling automatic damage so when you hit your your enemy you're going to deal a specific amount of damage based on your weapons and, and your powers well let me give you my my opinion about the entire package I think this is a good game because as I told you it's a complete game with a bestiary information about the, the campaign Mm, it has uh, some great advice on how to run uh, different uh, types of stories. It comes with four adventures. And uh, people who don't like uh, rules that are too crunchy or, or complex are going to fall in love in the sim with the simplicity of the system. And However, I think that players who are looking for a more uh, crunchy or complex structure are, aren't going to be uh, too happy. Uh, and this is another a negative point of, of the book. I think they should have added a lot, a lot more uh, uh, focuses or um, descriptors and maybe some character types, although the three basic types are, are okay. And so it's basically on what you, you expect from this game. If you want uh, to tell a great story with a well put campaign setting uh, and you don't, you don't want to, to obey all sorts of, of complex rules, this is going to be the, the game for you. Well, I hope uh, you enjoyed this review and I hope it helps you decide if you should get this game or not. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, type them down and I will read them. Uh, see you later.